Joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have Press TV's Johnny Miller, who's joining us from Moscow, uh, and also uh, joining us from Irkutsk, Russia, we have journalist Dmitry Zolotarev. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's uh, start off uh, with uh, Johnny. Uh, Johnny, what details and updates do you have to uh, give us with regards uh, to the uh, destruction of this dam on the Dnipro River? Well, both sides continue to blame uh, each other, but it does look like the damage is going to be more on the Russian side than the Ukrainian side. Tens of thousands of people may well be losing their homes. No reports yet of immediate casualties, but uh, the, the suffering of people will be enormous. Already images of uh, people uh, having to leave their homes, increase the amount of refugees in the country, uh, also threatening water to Crimea. I've spoken to people in Crimea, they're not too concerned. Of course, Crimea went for eight years without water from the Dnepro. Uh, but all the allegations that Russia did this, it seems uh, somewhat doubtful that Russia would damage the, the water supply to Crimea. It's also uh, not clear whether this was uh, done on a, sort of a specific time frame or whether it's just accidental. But it may well be connected in some way to the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Many people think that that counteroffensive is already underway. Uh, it will certainly uh, create a lot of uh, distraction from Russian forces. It may well be a ploy to, to take Russian forces away from other areas uh, to help the Ukrainian counteroffensive. But we'll see in the coming days whether either side exploits the explosion of the dam, and we might be able to find out more reasons uh, for whoever did it and why. Mr. Zolotarev, uh, give us your uh, thoughts on uh, the uh, UN Security Council meeting that took place with regards to the dam. Back and forth allegations uh, were being thrown by Russia and Ukraine. It is an act of terrorism. It is an act of terrorism not from Russian side, because uh, it absolutely doesn't favor in any way Russia. It hurts Russia much more than it hurts Ukraine. Look at the one side. Uh, well, first, if you are so concerned about your people as claim Ukrainians, why have you increased the water flow from the Dnipro hydroelectric station, which is uh, up the river flow? They increased the water flow, so they're flooding a lot more. The broken Kahovka uh, reservoir so uh, increasing the uh, the scope and scale of the disaster which is uh, taking place now also the uh, broken dam uh, allows to flow the minefields russian mild minefields which would help in uh, ukrainian forces to uh, just get over them by water so it's a very simple th math to, uh, uh, well, two plus two, uh, who uh, <laughs> gets their benefits uh, from the breaking down the Kahovka Dam. Also, also, despite what Ukrainians uh, claim, uh, it's very easy to uh, shell the the dam from the Ukrainian side. They uh, last year they tried to do that, as far as I remember, in December shelling it uh, with uh, American-made uh, rockets. So uh, they tried it as an, as an experiment. So um, it's, uh, there is no doubt to me who, uh, who has, uh, who's done that. So uh, Zelensky even wanted to participate uh, remotely uh, in this uh, UN Council and cancelled his participation because the, the West is not united in supporting Ukrainian version of what has happened, which means, which means his uh, Western bosses uh, don't want to look pretty bad just uh, covering his lies. And the lies are obvious because uh, the facts not in favor of Ukraine are just continuing to pop up. So it's absolutely simple. Johnny Miller, uh, the UNA chief has addressed uh, the Security Council stating that, uh, uh, well, he rather warned of the grave and foraging consequences on the humanitarian side. Walk us through that, please. Well, yeah, as I said, there's going to be uh, severe uh, humanitarian uh, issues with this, maybe issues that uh, aren't foreseen at the moment. Uh, there's also fears over the nuclear power plant, of course, north of the dam 
water is uh, water is falling, uh, threatening the nuclear power plants there. Uh, also, an ecological disaster. But also, know that there's been numerous times in this conflict, uh, the Crimea Bridge, the drone attack, in which both a drone attack on Moscow, in which both sides blame each other, and Russia's being blamed for a lot of things here, uh, blowing up its own bridge. I was I've done a lot of work in the terror bombing of Donetsk, of course, and some people even blame Russia for bombing civilians in Donetsk. And this is another case in which Russia is being blamed without much uh, evidence. Also, you have the, the Nord Stream pipeline, uh, which absurdly Russia was blamed uh, for that as, uh, as well. And there seems to be a breakdown of common sense or even honest reporting in, in certain Western mainstream outlets when even the United States is the, the main uh, uh, candidate for, for who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. And yet that's not even being uh, discussed. Uh, but as you say, also, whoever did this seems to clearly has no care or interest in the safety or well-being of uh, people on the ground in, in Ukraine. And my fear is that today we're talking about a dam. Uh, whoever did this, what's next? Uh, a nuclear power plant, plant perhaps. Uh, so civilians on this ground in, in, in inside Ukraine uh, continuing to suffer uh, in this conflict. And one last question for Mr. Zolotarev. Uh, in addition to this, uh, I, I want to get your thoughts on China, which has expressed serious concern about the humanitarian, economic, and ecological impacts of this incident. Uh, how dangerous does this situation continue to be as uh, the U.S. and its uh, allies uh, continue to uh, pump in more weapons into Ukraine? Well, pumping more weapons into Ukraine doesn't promise anything good. It means more deaths from the both sides, Russia and Ukraine. It means more poisoning of the soil of Ukraine because the war is a very dirty business. And uh, the chemicals which remain in the soil after the war, they are very hard to, to remove. So it means uh, the ground, uh, the soil uh, will be poisoned. So China is absolutely right with uh, its concerns. China has claimed uh, and uh, tried to address to, 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 to Ukraine mainly to uh, get to the uh, negotiation table. So to discuss with Russia the terms of uh, ending of this conflict. So uh, Ukraine wasn't ready. Russia was ready, Ukraine wasn't. So, uh, well, what can I say? The disaster concerning the Kahovka uh, dam uh, bombing is, uh, I don't know, it's not promising anything good. Well, Russian authorities are uh, doing what, all, everything in their power, power to help people, uh, to remove them from the disaster area and uh, to help them, help them in any way from their side. So it also uh, puts at risk of melting down the reactor, but Russian authorities are doing, uh, well, maybe more than they can to keep the reactor, well, um, in order, because the reactor is not uh, functioning fully now. They try to keep it, uh, well, in, uh, within those temperatures which are not critical, but who knows, maybe Ukrainians will decide to shell the, the re reactor with some advanced weapon they get. So pumping Ukraine with a any uh, more serious weapons uh, doesn't promise anything good. They may shell not only uh, the uh, positions of Russian army, they also may shell with HIMARS or something. This nuclear plant, which uh, would turn out into a bigger disaster than Chernobyl nuclear plant disaster was. So that's what I think. All right. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Uh, Press TV's Johnny Miller joining us from the Russian capital Moscow. Also, thanks to Dmitry Zolotarev, journalist joining us from Irkutsk, Russia. With that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of the News Review, but stay tuned. There is plenty more to come here on Press TV.